<laughs> so I started turning up at Ke Keb Dodge's house, uh, and he trained me for six months. Uh, well, for the for the duration of the next sort of year and a half, I was seeing Keb, mm. and he was like putting my leg up against the wall, being like, <laughs> "Stretch, you bastard!" <laughs> 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 KillerKellerOfficial.com THTC, the UK's leading ethical streetwear label. Organically grown and ethically built garments from hemp, organic cotton and other sustainable materials. 2019 is their 20th anniversary year. Join me with THTC as a Killer Keller podcast sponsor celebrating music, social activism, hemp and street culture. THTC, eco-fashion redefined since 1999. Come on, ma. Killer Keller Fortified featuring Patwan. Available on all good music platforms now. AG Dentistry. In my line of work, not only does what I do with the mouth get reviewed, it's also my instrument. And it's beyond important to me that my teeth get the professional service they deserve. The AG family provide expert dentistry, whether it's NHS or cosmetic. They're the finest in London. Head over to agdentistry.co.uk for more information on treatments and prices. AG Dentistry. Big shout to our sponsors, the Don's Graffiti Kings. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Killer Keller podcast, serves you right, live and direct, central London, as central as you need to be. I'm here with uh, actor, singer, guitarist, instrumentalist, Josh Whitehouse. How are you? I'm all right, man. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm it's, good. It's good. nice to be here in your humble abode. It's a humble one, isn't it? Humble. <laughs> yeah, humbling. Uh, humble humbling. Yeah, yeah. It's, got, uh, it's got characteristics that, that have been described as... Um, uh, proactive <laughs> calamity. <laughs> proactive calamity. Abadashri chic. Abadashri chic. Yeah. Good. <laughs> that, that ticks all the boxes, isn't it? Yeah. You were saying as part of your uh, um, your uh, live repertoire, you know, in terms of setup for your mm -hmm. band. Yeah. Um, more like trees. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. We got more like trees crew. Um, you have a similar setup to this, don't you? Yeah. 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 Uh, Cably, you know. <laughs> Cably and um, and possible things falling over everywhere at any given point. Yeah. 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 The sort of things that they never see, you know, in front. Of. Oh no! This looks like uh, organized and you know within the frame. Yeah. 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 I mean, for those that don't know, I mean, we've been running this for a minute, so you know, they know. I run a lot of this stuff in the simplest ways as possible, and a lot of people when they come in, they kind of double take and they're like, "What the what?" <laughs> but you don't need a lot, do you, these days? You no, know? no, you need a frame and a microphone. Yeah, uh, and uh, and a cup of chill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there we go with uh, some good oaty milk. Yeah, yeah, the new, the newness, the newness. It does actually taste like milk. It's it's better than I thought it would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. Mm -hmm. um, bring up speed, ladies and gentlemen. So essentially, we're dealing here with. Uh, uh, a man that is uh, enveloped in uh, cross pollination of all sorts of creative output, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, where yeah. where does this all begin, bro? Like, because you know, from naught to a hundred, naught being playing acoustic in uh, your bedroom at mm -hmm. your folks' home or wherever you may have mm -hmm. resided as as a youngster, to suddenly being pole vaulted into, you know, Game of Thrones lands. Like, yeah. where this all fucking begin let's start there it's uh it's a pretty crazy story really uh i mean it's got to be hasn't yeah. it really to and who ends up in those things you know <laughs> um i grew up in an arty family mm -hmm. uh my mum's a painter my dad's a poet pretty yeah, classic yeah. sounding classy yeah man <laughs> yeah man um where, where based whereabouts we were in burwardsley which is the sort of oh. north north of england countryside uh, forests and not many neighbours, country What's house. What's the nearest city to that? Can I hear the accent? Chester. Okay, okay. Yeah, my accent's kind of softened up since I moved to London two yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, was, I always thought I was going to be a painter after mm. mum. And so she always used to draw, t teach me to draw and I was always practising that. Mm. Got to about 11 years old and they got me an acoustic guitar. Fire. 
Yeah, fire. Fire in the valley, here we go. <laughs> yeah, go and then I actually, I went for a couple of lessons and did not enjoy it. I, I thought I'd never play the guitar again because I later found out in life that I generally just don't really like being taught things. Hmm. And I don't know if that's because I struggle to, maybe I'm like semi on the spectrum and I just can't focus on other people's sort of ways of explaining things without asking lots of questions and seeming like I'm being difficult. Yeah. Do you think I a lot of people don't like to, I, being told what to do and when you've been given something so fresh and, you know, it's like, this is new shit. Like, yeah, I like yeah. people doing that. Yeah, you know? no, I guess. I was just kind of, there's a, there's a mixture of thinking uh, someone invented this instrument and they figured out how to play it. Mm. Why can't I do that? Mm. But then also, I mean, going back to like high school and stuff, if people were in lessons, all the teachers thought I was naughty. Apart from the math teacher, the math teacher loved me. But yeah, everyone else well. thought I was being cheeky all the time because they'd explain it and I'd just be like, huh? You mm. know, so I just, it doesn't, I have to like rehearse things again and again and again. Does and that, someone, is that your favorite, favorite teacher, the one that got you? It's always the way, isn't it? Huh? Favorite teacher, the math teacher. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You need one teacher. You only need Mrs. one. Mrs. Barker. Teacher. Big up, Miss Barker. Old type, Miss Barker. We know you're out there. <laughs> Salute. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I did guitar lessons for a bit. That didn't really uh, pan out. I said I'd never play guitar again. And my friend brought an electric guitar around, put it in drop D, and showed me how to play Muse. Nice. nice. That one. I was like, that's. Give me a go at that. And so I just started practicing that, and then begged my parents for an electric guitar. And then sort of started making punk bands and then music was going to be the thing. Also, my brother-in-law was in a band called Manson. I mean, my oh, sister shit. was never actually married to him, gotcha. but um, yeah, he was the drummer. So they used to come yeah. around to our house and practice and stuff. And that nice. one day I saw them on Jules Holland and I was like, <laughs> I want that. I want that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that will be mine. <laughs> it will be mine. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, and so then, yeah, I started doing all these different bands. How old were you at that time when you got in, you know, when you saw those sorts of things hit you? 12. 12. 11, mm. 10, maybe. Yeah. And they were coming around to the house from when I was about five mm -hmm. and rehearsing, and I'd just go and watch them play. Oh. And, you know, giant <laughs> yeah. speakers, and I was like, mm. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I was always kind of around it. I remember, I've got this really vivid memory of one time the singer came around. I was like, who are you? He's like, I'm the plumber. And then uh, he wasn't a plumber, <laughs> but I believed him. <laughs> Mum, the plumber's dead. <laughs> Bro, that is such dry northern, you know what I mean? S yeah. Cynicisms, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you, like you can't beat dry humour of the north, I swear to God. <laughs> nah, that's why I like playing northerners. Anyway, yeah, I started doing all these bands and then eventually ended up being in more like trees when I was about 18. When I was about 15, I had a flamenco duo with my friend Fran. Oh, you did dance, but dancing. Uh, no, not dancing. No, just like flamenco guitar. Oh, brilliant. Do you know like yeah, Rodrigo could... Gabriela? Do you know those guys? Yeah, I do. That. It's fire. Yeah. yeah. So we used to like watch them a lot. And They're um, insane. That, that, that's insane. Yeah, yeah. No, they're nuts. And uh, we kind of, we'd, we'd learn to play tamakun or like copy their songs a bit. And then we started figuring out how to do the strum thing. Oh. So I started becoming really influenced by Spanish style guitar, flamenco. Mm. And Fran was much better at it than me. And so he taught me a lot back then. Because um, your, your guitaring is really tight, isn't it? Like you've, it's pretty tight, man. It's pretty tight. <laughs> it's pretty tight. I need to practice my scales more. Yeah. That's what I need to do. I've yeah. been, I'm all good on the tricks. Yeah. But I've always had a bit of an obsession with tricks and learning things and like I can balance things on my nose for a long time and I can like, juggle mm. or I can ride a unicycle or, yeah. you know, kind it's of always wanted to learn. complexities, isn't it? You like the complexities. Yeah. And when I was like 10, I was probably, I used to, I used to sellotape, um, broomsticks together and I'd sellotape like five broomsticks together and balance them on my chin in the garden. It'd be like the height of the house and I'd be like, this is cool. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> nah, for real. Yeah. yeah. Balanced a BMX on my chin once. That was difficult. No was way. How do, okay. Race. <laughs> How do you, the is seat. it the seat? Yeah. Yeah, it's the only bit that doesn't move. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because everything else is. Everything else is wiggling all over the place. Yeah. Uh, Even if you did the handlebars, it'd be. Yeah. What, would, what would be the f first um, key hit to the f to, to the body if a, if a bike that high came tumbling down on you? I mean, have you had any accidents? No, not really. I no. reckon you'd probably get the um, handlebars on your back, perhaps. Yeah, because it, it kind of, wouldn't it? It'd slip around. 
Mm. Where was I? I sort of trailed off onto yeah, tricks. Yeah, I mean, yeah, tricks, um, yeah. Ended up being in more like trees because Fran and Josh split up and then we... Um, I, I met this incredible bass player, Lachlan, who's a double bass player, does sort of concert bass and plays with a lot of big orchestras and stuff, which was... Uh, and we figured we started doing... Um, trying to do a acoustic drum and bass, like trying to make flamenco -y drum and bass became like the vibe because Matt was playing on a cajon mm -hmm. and he used to... He's cajon always, is the box. Yeah, thing. it's a box. And yeah. so he always uh, used to drum on his, on his knees a lot um, because he didn't have a drum kit, but it meant that he got really good at like doing drum solos in his head. Oh, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give him a box, and he's just kind of away, and he's become, <laughs> yeah, he's become this really, really quite sort of very different style of cajon player, I guess. Yeah. So for a long time, I was I moved to London when I was eighteen. Um, my brother Tim came back to Chester, and he sort of saw me playing guitar, and I hadn't. He's yeah. like he's like sixteen years older than me, so I, he hadn't really. We'd lived quite a different life, you know, separate. He was in London. I was back in Chester. I was growing He's up. He's sixteen years older than you. Yeah. So with that and the with that and the disparity of like you guys being so far away, the age difference and the distance of being mm -hmm. away. Yeah, man. I would imagine that was a, a pretty sizable jump. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. Uh, so one day he comes back to Chester and he sees me playing the guitar and he goes, "Oh, you got quite good at that, didn't you? Do you wanna?" Come to London, I'll try and get you some gigs. I, I know a couple of people in the music industry. Maybe I can find you some gigs. Maybe I could try and get you signed or something. And so me and Fran went on a mission to London to try and do that. And unfortunately, all that fell apart with Fran. But um, we uh, ended up making this new band. We got signed to BBE. Hmm. And then for quite a while, that was the only mission. And then one day, I was playing a gig for... Um, Oh, not to mention, by the way, but Tim also like ended up building as a warehouse to live in. He sold his flat quit his job. And well, in London, he built a warehouse. Yeah, yeah. He, he kind of took all the money from his flat. Right. And and paid for all the materials to just, like, build a place so that we could all live for cheap. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, man. Where was yeah. that? Where? Yeah. Where? In It's where we live now. Oh, in... Um, the hub. Yeah, damn, in North East. Your, is that your bros? Yeah, he built that, yeah. That's place is fuck. Dude, that's <laughs> fucking fuck. Come here. Dude. That's fire. Yeah, that's yeah, it's fire. good, right? Uh, yeah. So Tim did a good thing. Yeah, he um, really did, because that's like a hub of like, you know, from my, I've had, in fact, I would argue that at least 20% of the people that come through all have either been there or lived there or still live there. Yeah. <laughs> For real, like, that's the spot. Yeah, it is a spot. Uh, we've had some good times there. We're actually rebuilding it into a slightly different shape at the moment, like extending some of the rooms and stuff. Mm. But it's good, you know, it's flexible and it means we can do things like that. Um, but yeah, so our aim was to like bring in musicians and try and connect people and maybe sort of cross-pollinate music in the industry and in London, mm -hmm. uh, which kind of ended up really working out, you know? We've yeah. ended up living with some amazing musicians. Which adds um, value to your your creative output, doesn't it, you know? Absolutely, yeah. Um, it all, is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For those that... Yeah, it's... <laughs> Just it's screen, we'll call it a screensaver. Just checking. Okay, those cool. that have been on the podcast before know the real deal on the laptop, all right? For those whole time. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are my secrets safe with you, all right? <laughs> yeah, no, you're all good, you're all good. Um, so I ended up getting a gig uh, that Tim found us for um, Jack Wills. Do you know Jack Wills? It's like um, kind of rich boy kind of... Jack Wills. Country... Pumpkin. Oh, you can introduce me to him, though. <laughs> that sounds great. Clothing. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, imagine clothes you might wear dealing with cows in oh, the field. Oh, I see. But, like, nice clothes. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah and... I get what you mean. There yeah. is definitely a, a pedigree of people that were, but, but, the, wear that sort of stuff, in it? Yeah. And also, yeah. it's pretty cool to be mixing and matching it. Mixing and matching it is yeah. cool. Yeah, I got some, I got some garms out of it and right. enjoyed them. Uh, anyway, I, I ended up uh, doing a gig for Jack Wills. It was like a varsity polo match. There was like a bunch of people on horses and stuff. And... Damn, this is levels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even ever heard the word polo match on a podcast. <laughs> Not this podcast. <laughs> Carry on, it's yours. <laughs> um, it's G. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I got scouted at that to do a modeling job for Jack Wills. Not to do the job, but to cast for it. Yeah. And so I turned up at this casting and I'd done like a couple of modeling jobs before, but just like... Kind of like I did something for um, uh, Paul Smith 
You know, like a catalog shot in a suit like this. Yeah, I think I've seen it. And I've done some stuff where it's really posy. And I, to be honest, I hated it. Like, I didn't really like doing that kind of modeling particularly. um, Because I don't don't like feeling like a poser, you know. That's pretty crazy. The transition right there is almost like... You must feel like, man, I just kind of step into this situation and it just... You know you're in the right place at the right time. Yeah, I guess. There's been a lot of that in my life so far. Yeah. (laughs) but I, I, I do this casting and it was, um, when I get there, there's like some of the models outside that were waiting to go in. They were like, oh, her, apparently it's a really uh, exciting director. Yeah, she's a really big photographer. And one of the guys from Dead Man's Shoes is in there. Do you know Dead Man's Shoes? Shane Meadows' film? Mm, yeah, it rings bells. Yeah, it rings it's a really bells. good film. Yeah. Um, mm. Anyway, so I, I go in, so I was kind of like, oh, what's going on? And uh, it was just different from anything I'd done before in terms of anything modeling-wise in right. a big way. Right. Uh, they, they were asking us to scream at the camera, kiss the girl, fight the guy, dance like no one's looking. Like, just kind of like go for it. Chase the ball, you know? <laughs> just like... Well, you know, it sounds like an extension of his wider portfolio that he was kind of like scouting for. Huh? <laughs> yeah, maybe. You know I mean? <laughs> He's looking for that extra, you know, z- 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 va- va- voom. Mm. You know what I mean? For future things. Yeah, but I had... Uh, a lot of fun, and then I ended up getting the job. I just kind of gave it beans, and um, then the shoot was exactly like that. It was like a lot of improvised-based stuff, which I'd never done before. Mm. You know, I'd done a bit of modeling, and I'd done music, I'd done art, but I hadn't done, like, improvising. So they'd be, they'd be sort of saying to us, uh, you guys all just dance, and then I'm going to come and whisper something for you to do in your ear, and you go do it, and I want you guys to just react. You know, if he's touching her bump, push him over, have a fight. Or something. So it's just kind of like, <laughs> yeah, yeah for you real. Know, obviously don't like punch each other, but like yeah. go for it. Mm. And so we were just like always doing all this mad stuff on the shoot and I'd never experienced anything like it. And I was like having fun and I just kind of was like feeling exhilarated. Like, yeah, this is a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I did two campaigns with them in the end. And then the director is Elaine Constantine. Okay. And yeah. she directed Northern Soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. And at this point she said to me, all right, love. Have you ever uh, have you ever heard of Northern Soul music? Yeah. I was like, nope. And she says, uh, all right, well, I'll tell you what, love. I'm running a dance club. I'm making a film, I am. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I'm making a film. Been writing it 15 years. Wow. And, uh, wow. Yeah. I'm trying to get it off the ground 15 years. And she's like, I'm doing dance clubs at the, uh, at the Old Queen's Head if you want to come along. Uh, every month we've got about 60 kids learning to dance because we, we need, we need young'uns. Because yeah. it's set in the 70s and all the young'uns are old now. Mm-hmm. So we need to train people so that they look authentic. Uh, so we started learning to dance. And I did that for about six months. And then uh, after six months of doing the monthly sessions, mm-hmm. she says, do you want to go and like, spend some time? You're getting it. It's pretty cool. And she was saying, you know, if you, if you get good at the dancing, maybe you could be an extra. Maybe she'll give you a couple of lines yeah, in the yeah, film. Maybe yeah. she'll give you this, maybe she'll give you that. And you had no expectations neither. You were... No, I just wanted to keep hanging out with her because she was wicked. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I just kept on wanting to sort of carry on down that path of whatever it was that involved being able to hang around with her more. And sure, if I ended up getting some involvement in that movie, then wicked. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. Bonus, yeah. So I just kept dancing and um, she sent me to meet a guy called Keb Dodge, who's like... Yeah, man. You know Keb Dodge? Yeah, yeah Northern Keb Soul Dodge. Yeah, of course, DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don, yeah. yeah. So Thank started, she's finest, man. Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> so I started turning up at Keb, Keb Dodge's house uh, and he trained me for six months. Uh, well, for the, for the duration of the next sort of year and a half, I was seeing Keb. Mm. And he was like putting my leg up against the wall, being like, <laughs> stretch, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wince, you pussy. <laughs> <laughs> On you, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was tough. It was tough. He had me with a samurai sword. My legs bent standing like that. He's like, you need to change your calves. When you get home, I want you to put some weight spirit on the floor and kick the floor with your bare feet. Well, that's <laughs> like some Rocky Balboa training. <laughs> it was. I can see it now in the film. Yeah, it was. It's you like the making of. needed to get the blisters. <laughs> the making of. You know? Yeah. And so I was doing that for, you know, let's say six months. And then she said, um, I got like a lot better at the dancing from hanging out with Keb because he's an amazing dancer. Yeah, he's a don. Nut job, but he's amazing. Yeah. Um, and then he, I, Elaine said to me, how do you feel about acting, love? I was like, give it a go. Yeah. And she was like, all right, I've got a couple of acting mates. If you want to go hang out with them, you know, you can practice some scenes for me. I was like, okay, cool. And so I started doing all these practice scenes. Mm. I started speaking to actor friends I knew and they were giving me a hand. There was a guy called Orlando Seal. She sent me to see maybe five different coaches. And honestly, like I found it quite 
I mean, I think the thing I learned from going to see the acting coaches, because I told you I don't like being taught, mm. <laughs> is mm-hmm. I kind of, I just got over the fear. And I, I did it because I wanted to impress Elaine. Yeah, so I just right. kept being willing to put myself in the room and be vulnerable until I felt like I was getting over that. And then I feel like what, when I really learned it was, for one, half of the character I played in Northern Soul in the end, I, it's... It's like 70% Elaine herself, you know? like For real? Yeah, because of her accent, her body language, and when I was hanging out with her, just be like, hey, fuck you, you prick! Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, just yeah, be, yeah. We'd just be joking around with it all the time, and it just started coming out, and the swagger. and mm. Um, mm. So I, I ended up learning with Elaine in her kitchen, and she started just like... Mannerisms and all sorts of... She'd read the scenes with me and film me, and then she'd make me watch it back and be like, you look like a prick there. <laughs> what's that yeah. you're doing with your eyebrows you look stupid don't sit like a sack of shit you know sort yourself out lad. be strong keep your head up what's wrong with you <laughs> is, is she from Wigan is she Wigan yeah she was from Wigan big she up used the to... Wigan crew you know yeah. for those of you out of town is that from England Wigan's a place in like what the north west north west isn't it north yeah, yeah. it's near, near north. Bolton Bolton yeah yeah kind of St Helens way isn't it that, that yeah kind of general direction yeah um, and yeah uh, it's where it was, became like this crazy hub, didn't it? Like, mm-hmm. uh, of just, of just mad. It was, it wasn't a genre specific thing. It was just a scene, wasn't it, of soul music that was impossible to import, to get imported, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was the the kids in the north started flying out to America to um, mm. to find basically records that never made it yeah. and that had never been discovered, and that labels like apparently you know in Detroit and Philadelphia and Chicago. All the soul bands, the biggest ones, would use the same musicians as the smaller ones, but then there'd just be these smaller records and smaller bands that never got picked up by the labels, so Mm. their CDs were just in the stores, well, their vinyls were just in the stores. Mm. And so there was loads of undiscovereds, and the the kids from the north somehow cottoned onto it, and they'd fly out there, and they'd be picking up records, and they'd take them back to the UK. Mm. And then they'd, uh, they'd DJ, but they'd put a label over the record and call it a cover-up. Mm-hmm. And that's that's how you became the biggest DJ because no one knew what you were playing and so no one could get a copy of it. So that's how you kept your sort of status as a DJ. Yeah, that's Which is sick. very different to how it's happening now and it's yeah. really cool. I love the anonymity. Historic that. time, you know. Yeah, man. The migration of that, that whole genre going... And I'm, I've, I've always tried to kind of piece that, map it out of my head. Right, Liverpool docks... The import of an export of like products, the music coming over. There must have been a something must have happened, but that's that's magical, isn't it? Mm-hmm. When you think about how that even became a, 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 just just a thing, mm-hmm. crazy, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's bonkers, man. Um, and anyway, she kind of like just taught me for a while to do all this, and then uh, from what I gather, there was quite a few people against. Because she was in the background sort of talking to people going, I think I might try and use Josh for this film. He's, he's Matt, he's Matt, he's this character. Mm. And everyone was kind of like, don't do that. <laughs> he's not an actor, he's not trained, he's going to mess it up for you. Love. Were these were these actors saying this? Some of them. Mm. I guess some of them were, bag. you know, producers or people just, you know, like people who advise the director. Mm. You know, even acting coaches, people I'd worked with who said I can't act for Toffee and they were like, no, nah, I wouldn't do it, love. You know, because yeah. in the sessions I was doing with them, I, I didn't didn't click, I didn't get it. Mm. And so, uh, but she kind of taught me and had this faith in me, like ridiculously so. Uh, what do you think was, uh, just sorry, cut you short, mm. st- stay on that. But what, what do you think is, you know, from your point of view, your, what was your, um, your sticking point? Was it your reading? Was it your um, uh, What, the sticking point is in what she... Well, why, would, why would people have questioned that at the time? Your... your Oh, Acting why would skills? Yeah, what was? Did, would you say your your main? Uh, I think people issue. were worried that I wasn't trained. Oh, that's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, and that I'd never done anything before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, then I mean, I'd kind of, of been <laughs> tested, and I, I think they'd filmed some of my lessons with the teacher, and they just didn't think I had the pizzazz right. thing, you know. Um, but it was just it's just a craft, you know. You got to kind of learn it and. Well, I'll kind of get on to the, uh, yeah, yeah, the rest yeah. of learning it after. But she, um, I think she saw something in me when we did the, the Jack Wills campaign. She asked me to, she told me this since. She said, uh, yeah, Josh, love, there's a bunch of extras over there. 
you mind keeping them entertained? Because we're having a bit of a technical. And I was like, yeah, sure, love. And I grabbed a guitar and I jumped up on a hay bale and I started singing. And they all just kind of came around and I was like, la, 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 da, 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 da. And she was, <laughs> she was like, that's oh. sick. <laughs> yeah. I want to bottle that is what she told me. She Bling. was thinking. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so she kind of just like, she had a bit of a tunnel vision on sort of making it happen, which I, you know, Massive, if you ever watch this yeah. and then thank you again, uh, I will never stop thanking you for everything you did for me in that for sense. Real. And then basically after in total two years of learning to dance and practicing this acting, mm. And there was a young lad called Ethan as well. He's um, he was he's like he was like thirteen or something when we made the film. He's in the film. He's an incredible dancer. Mm -hmm. He had this swagger and he was very highly energetic and kind of annoying, uh, yeah. but in the best way, mate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we all grow up as well. You know, it's only thirteen at the time. You know. So, yeah, yeah, but he. I actually ended up basing some of the character on him as well and just sort of pieced it because he was just so like. Hey, I'll like, we'll get, get, get. <laughs> bouncing around the place and he's a good dancer and was, you know he had this swagger so I kind of yeah. did a mixture of him and a bit of a lane and then just like learned the script eventually but um, that film ended up it took two years before it would come out so mm -hmm. I had this sort of eruption of learning to act and, and, and acting like... in a lead role in a film for the first time yeah. I was like whoa what is this can I do this and then there's two years of like them Nothing. finishing it because obviously like no one's seen it no one knows I'm an actor. I don't even know that I'm an actor. And so then, you know, wow. I've not got an agent. Like, I've just had this crazy opportunity. And the film ended up coming out. And about a week before it came out, Elaine came into an agency with me. Uh, after another guy in the film, James Lance, said, you should meet my agent, lad. Mm. And so I went to meet them and I signed up with them after Elaine sort of praised me and showed them some clips. Uh, and they took me on board and then suddenly... From like the week I got signed with United in London, I ended up signing with CAA in LA mm -hmm. and Untitled Management in LA. Fire. Ended up getting like 16 people on my team all of a sudden within about three weeks because this film came out. Get the it, guitar, lad. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, you know, it, um, it just all kind of like snowballed when the film came out because the film was released by Universal. It's supposed to go in three cinemas for three days, I think, or yeah. five cinemas for three days across the UK. Mm. And then it became such a cult hit because of like the scene being so real. That's right. That it ended up in 250 cinemas for about two months and it got nominated for a BAFTA and it got all this attention. Um, it's, had a, it's got a cult thing to it, hasn't it? It's yeah. That energy that it reminds... It, those kind of films remind me of like the... Like the Metallica doc, some kind of monster, or um, mm -hmm. the art of rap that Ice T did. It's like it leans towards a homage of of, um, of a time that was very innocent and and yeah. it, it, it created a, a thing before all of this now uh, mm -hmm. has happened, isn't it? You know, you kind of DNA of your of, of music and shit. You know? Yeah, yeah, and it helped as well that when she was making the film, she'd have. She allowed, she sort of got a lot of people that were actually from the scene, like the older generation. Oh, sick. And they were, like, when we were doing the dance scenes, they'd be up in the <coughs> rafters watching, mm. you know? And they, she had, like, uh, big DJs from the time on set. And if anything seemed off or if she'd missed anything, then they were allowed to sort of be like, hey, mm. like, that's not how it would have been, love. I'm sorry. Mm. And they could, you know, they could talk about it. And it kind of meant that it had been a very sort of supported... Um, documentation of the scene yeah. that the people who were there couldn't really argue with because they were there on set of them and they were all sort of, you know, validating it as correct. And because she was from Wigan, I guess she knew all of those people. Like, yeah. By, yeah. Yeah. I did come with the, the, the pork pie hat. If you listen in audio, you won't <laughs> see the, you, you won't see the homage, but yeah. Um, yeah. I went to Wigan a bunch of times um, and the, the venue that, used to hold the night the nights it was one particular uh, um spot that's still there it's not a venue no more it's it, it, mm -hmm. but it still exists as a building yeah what's your what was it like trying to find like well how did they go through replicating the 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 set of oh. that, of that of that film I believe they used uh king george's hall in blackburn had a very similar interior to the original Wigan. Nice. You know, with the big sort of thing around the dance floor yeah. and a huge wooden dance floor stage and curtains. Because all, all that, that shit's key, bro, isn't it? You know, yeah. If you haven't got the aesthetic, then you ain't got... 
Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah, no, no, no. And then we just had a really talented art department who rebuilt the exact sort of Wigan Casino sign. Mm -hmm. And the costume department was incredible. It's still, like, to date, one of the best jobs I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And I'm going on to my sort of 10th or 12th thing now, which is mad to think, because I remember back then, yeah, I, I first you. saw my first credit come up on IMDb, and I was like, hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. On IMDb. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then your wiki comes up and everything's like yeah. Kusha. Yeah, which was uh, uh which is just it's cool. It kind of it kind of becomes like trying to um trying to get tokens, you know. Like That's you just right. want to earn another one and kind of figure out how you can get one. And so I kind of it, it was odd because I'd then done that film two years ago and then I had all these agents who were very good agents. And uh they started putting me out for things, and I was kind of like, "Can I, can I act? Can I still do this? Like, I only ever really learned asking. to be one yeah, person. Man. Never really like actually trained. Don't really know. I know I like doing stupid voices. I know I like yeah. walking weird or like yeah, yeah, yeah. becoming characters in my kitchen. But yeah. I don't know if I can like actually. Could I be an American? Could yeah, I do yeah. this? Could I do that? Would I? You know, bro. I was exactly the same when when I got made um, part of the voiceover world you know because you're right. like, yeah doing standard reads like this is my voice is what mm -hmm. but i think what directors producers anyone in the film industry look for when they go through those you know those tapes mm -hmm. you'll never really know you mm -hmm. know what i mean you just don't know it's certainly the case with the voiceover stuff i'm I've sure you've done doing, i've started doing voiceover um, you know, like, is that right? Are we sure? Are we sure? Yeah. Well, I found is they just want me to be northern. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you time. go. Yeah. It's like if it's you know relatable. Mm -hmm. All this bread. Yeah. You know, it's just like whatever it's gonna <laughs> be. Kill we a make killer the best bread. Kill a killer podcast. Kill a killer podcast. Fucking <laughs> 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 great.